Hi everyone. Today, I'm really excited to introduce to you a brand new project we've been working on really hard over at Cypress. Cypress is an end-to-end -end testing tool traditionally aimed to test anything that runs in a browser. We now have an alpha release for our new dedicated component testing runner, and this is going to make testing your components even easier than ever before. We currently have support for Vue 2, Vue 3, and React. And in this video, I'm going to be going over a Vue 3 app and showing you how you can test it using Cypress component testing. This is the application we're going to be taking a look at. You can see we have a number of posts and these are going to be loaded asynchronously from a server. We then have the posts here and you can go ahead and filter those by today, this week, or this month. And this is the component we're going to be focusing on testing. At the moment, this component has some tests using uh, Node.js. It's using Jest and JS DOM and Vue test utils. And we're going to see how we could potentially migrate that over to Cypress and some of the differences that come with that. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I needed to do was install some dependencies. I installed Cypress, I installed Cypress Webpack Dev Server, and I installed Cypress Vue Next. After that, I had to do a tiny bit of configuration. Over in my Cypress directory inside of plugins index, I went ahead and imported start dev server from Cypress Webpack Dev Server. The next thing I did was import my Webpack configuration. And finally, inside of the on dev server start event, I called start dev server, passing in my Webpack configuration. This is going to allow Cypress to read all your components using your existing configuration. So you don't have to write any new configuration, which is definitely a win. The next thing I had to do was create a new file called cypress.json at my root. And I just had to tell Cypress where to find my components inside of source and where to find my test files inside of spec.ts. After I did that, everything was ready to go. The final change I had to make was in tsconfig.json. Basically, I'm not going to be using Jest anymore. We're going to be using a browser-based test runner, and I'm going to use the types from Cypress. If we go ahead and save this one off, we're actually going to have some errors. If I head over to my timeline spec, we're going to see those ones right now. You can see here, I was using Jest before, which has a slightly different type signature. What I'm going to do is comment everything out, and then we're going to work backwards and fix everything up. So let's just go ahead and comment out all of the Jest references. Finally, now that I've made all those changes, I'm going to head over to my terminal and run at yarn cypress open CT. And this is going to open up the component testing runner. CT is short for component testing. While this opens, let's go ahead and review our component really quickly. So you can see over here, I have my timeline spec. This is the spec file. And if I head over to timeline.view, I have the timeline component as well. You can see here, we have the posts and down here, we're looping over each of the periods. That's going to be today, this week, and this month. Finally, we're going to render the period and that's something we can click on and update. And we're going to render all of these timeline posts. That's going to be all of the filtered posts. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see we're going to fetch some data here by calling store.fetch posts. If we head into fetch posts and have a look what's going on there, we can see it's doing await axios.get. So it's going to fetch these from a server. The next thing it's going to do is some post processing and then update the state. Finally, let's head back to our component. You can see down here, we're just doing some more transformation. We're then going to filter the posts based on the current period. So today, this week, or this month. Finally, we go ahead and return those so they're available on our template. Let's head over to our test runner and see what's going on. So you can see here on the left, I have all of my spec files. In this case, I only have one. And if I select that, it is going to execute my test. Of course, nothing is going to work at the moment. We need to migrate from Jest over to Cypress, but that's not going to be too difficult. We can use this full screen, which is pretty nice. What I personally prefer to do is have everything a bit smaller and then have my editor side by side. So I'm going to minimize this spec list in here and make this a little bit bigger as well. The next thing I'm going to do is resize my editor just so we can see what's going on. And let's go ahead and fix up this error. So the problem is that API request. You can see over here in my spec file originally, I was doing jest.mock and mocking out the request. And we're going to have to find some way to do this. There are a number of ways to do this in Cypress. What we're going to do is say sci.intercept and intercept the request. I'm going to intercept the post request that's going to be on slash posts. And now we can go ahead and customize our reply. In this case, I'm just going to say request.reply and we're going to pass in the new response. I'm going to use the exact same one as before. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that one in here. We just have to update this and change it from data to be body. Finally, let's go ahead and save it off and see what happens. We're actually going to get another error. What we need to do is change how we're mounting our component. At the moment, I'm using mount and that comes from view test utils. What I need to do is change what I'm using. 
I'm going to use Cypress slash view. This is actually going to use view test utils under the hood. So we're going to have the exact same arguments in here. Nothing needs to change. Let's save it off and see what happens now. We can see the error is now gone and we're successfully rendering our content. The styling is not quite there, but this is definitely good progress. Let's go ahead and fix up the styling. All I need to do is import my styling. Previously, I was loading this one from a CDN and that's not going to be available right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and import it from Bulma slash CSS slash Bulma dot CSS. If I save this off, everything is looking pretty good. And this is one of the main highlights of Cypress component testing. Everything is running in a browser. So while you're running your tests, you can actually see what's going on and you can even interact with your component and see how it works. We currently have a bug. We're not rendering any of our posts. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. It turns out the problem is in timeline component. So if we head over to the timeline component and we scroll up here to our template and then head into timeline post, this is where all of our timeline components or posts are going to be rendered. I'm using a router link here and this is part of view router. You can see in my previous spec, I was being very lazy. I just decided to stub out the router link and that's why it's not going to render any posts. It's just rendering a div. And this is something I didn't quite catch in my tests earlier because I couldn't see what was going on. What I'm going to do is just delete this one, save it off, and now everything is working correctly. This is definitely a big improvement. We can now see what's going on and we're actually rendering all of our posts as well. Finally, I can interact with this and see everything is working correctly, kind of like Storybook. So this really doubles as a tool, not only to test your components, but also to design and iterate on your components as well. For example, if I decided I didn't like the look of the component, I could just come over here and change it. For example, changing this style everything is going to immediately update. I actually prefer the green, so I am going to revert that one. Let's go ahead now and start working on our tests. So the first test is going to be rendered a loader. And our first assertion was that the progress loader is being rendered. We actually can't see this being, being rendered. This request is finishing way too fast. So what I can do is say delay and pass in a thousand. And this is going to delay that response. Let's save it off and see what happens. And you saw the loader was rendering there. Next thing I'm going to do is make an assertion and assertions are a little bit different. They're a little bit more concise. All I need to do is say sci.get and we're going to get the same selector. So copy paste that one up here. I uh, copy pasted the wrong thing. Let's give that one one more try. Uh, let's copy that one and paste it here. And there we go. And that's all we actually need to do. This is going to assert that the component exists. I'm actually getting an error here. Let's fix that one up. And now everything is going to pass. Just to show you what a failure looks like, I'm going to make this one fail. And you can see it's going to keep searching for a few thousand, a few thousand milliseconds, and then it is going to fail. Anyway, that's all passing now. So let's go ahead and move on to the next test. The next thing we're going to do is assert that three time periods are rendered. In this case, today, this week, and this month. So let's go ahead and do that. Just going to delete this test for now. We don't need that one anymore. We're going to move everything up here. Again, I'm going to use sci.get. We're going to get the anchor tag and then we're going to find one that contains today. And this should pass. Sure enough, everything is going to pass. I'm going to remove that delay for now. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here for this week and this month. So let's just go ahead and update those. If we save this off, everything is still passing. Finally, what I'd like to do is actually go ahead and assert the class has been applied correctly. In this case, is active should be applied to today by default. All we need to do is say should and then we can pass in have class and assert the correct class is going to be rendered. In this case, it is going to be is active. So let's just say is active. If we save that off, everything is now passing. The next thing we need to do is update the period when clicked. So this is going to do a few things. We're firstly going to change the active class and then we're going to change all the posts that we render. So let's go ahead and add an assertion for that post that we're rendering in the first place. I can just say sci-get. Sci we're going to go ahead and grab, let's say a div and this one should contain some specific text. In this case, it's going to contain test post. Let's save it off and there we go. I'm just going to pass in today to make it really clear and that one is still going to pass. Finally, we can do something similar. Uh, go ahead and click on that one and make sure everything else is going to update as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. First thing I'm going to do is copy this assertion and what I'm actually going to do is change this one a little bit. Instead of writing the same assertion, we can do an alias. So all I need to do is come up here and say adds and pass in the alias. This one's going to be today. And I'm going to have the same thing for this week and this month as well, just to save a little bit of time. Now what I can do is go ahead and easily click on this week. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to say sci.get and we're going to get our alias. In this case, it's going to be today, referring to this same component up here. And then we're going to say click. 
And if we save this one off, we can see that is hopefully going to work correctly. Uh, we are clicking on today. What we should be doing is clicking on this week and that should change the posts. And that is working correctly. Let's go ahead and make another assertion. We should be able to see both of these today as well as this week. So let's go ahead and assert that too. And that is going to pass. Finally, we're going to make sure the class was applied correctly. So I'm going to do that as well. We're going to go ahead and get at this week and say the class is correct. We should just say should have class is active. Save it off. We can add one more assertion for today and make sure it has the right class as well. In this case, the class should have been removed. So we can say not have class. Save this one off, everything is still passing. So what we can do now is delete this test as well. We don't need this one anymore. We've updated all of that. One thing to notice is what we're not doing here. There's nothing like await next tick. There's nothing like await flush promises. None of that is a problem anymore. Cypress is going to automatically wait and do what you would expect. So it becomes a lot easier to write your tests. Another thing we're not doing is making our specific assertions. Rather than expecting things, we just go ahead and behave as a user does and everything is going to work as you would expect. So the tests are a little bit more readable in that sense as well. Or at least they're a little bit more closer to what a user would really be doing. Finally, let's go ahead and finish our test. What's the last thing we need to do? If we scroll down to the very last test, it is this one here actually, renders today's post by default. And we actually don't even need that test. We're effectively doing that implicitly up here. So we can go ahead and delete that last test as well. Now we can notice a few things. Cypress tests are a little bit different to what you would traditionally have with your unit tests. Instead of writing four very focused unit tests, we now have one test. It exercises all of the same behavior, but it does it all in a single test. So I really prefer this. We're actually getting the same coverage, but we wrote a lot less code. More importantly, it's much closer to what a user would be doing. And we actually caught a few bugs as we went, including the one where the posts were not correctly rendered. Another really nice thing about this is we're in a real browser. So if you want to debug something, all you need to do is come down here and you can use your console or your network tab or your elements and browse around and see what's going on, which is really useful. You are debugging uh, your application in the exact same way you would debug in production. It's as opposed to using something like a terminal and trying to grep through this response and figure out what the heck is going on. So this is definitely a much more enjoyable way to write your components as well, especially with the nice feedback loop. You can see everything updating nice and quickly. Finally, now that the test has finished, I can go back and see what was going on the whole time. And more importantly, I can continue playing with this test and see what's going on. So I can continue kind of iterating or experimenting, which is a really nice feature to have. There is one more really cool feature I wanted to show you, and that's to do with the viewport. What I can do is say size viewport and pass in a viewport of let's say 800, 400, and that's going to change the size of everything. And this is really useful for a number of reasons primarily for responsive design. You can see how your component renders, perhaps on the size of a phone or something like that. So this is definitely a really nice way to not only develop uh, interfaces, but to test them as well. We're effectively getting all the benefits of Storybook, and we're also getting all the benefits of testing as well. So you kind of kill two birds with one stone. The final question here, here is, is something like a view test utils still relevant? Because clearly we're not using view test utils here, right? It turns out view test utils is still relevant, but for a different reason. As opposed to using view test utils directly in your applications, we're going to be using it under the hood here. So you're still getting all of the benefits of view test utils. For example, it's going to handle all the complexity of mounting your components. You can use global to provide some plugins. You can also use data to set some data, or you can even pass in some props. So you will be using view test utils still, but in a much more indirect method. And this is the same with if you're using something like React. Instead of using testing library directly, you might be using something under the hood, which is similar, but you'll be writing everything with the same API. The final thing to take away here is kind of how these tests look. I mentioned earlier, we don't have anything like next tick or flush promises. We are no longer having view leaking into our tests. Our tests are completely framework agnostic. All we're doing is interacting with the application how the user would do. They don't care about things like next tick or flush promises. All they want to do is go ahead and click on things and everything behaves as you would expect. One of the really nice things here is you can't even tell I'm testing a view application. You could easily go ahead and basically reuse these tests exactly the same for something like React. And that's kind of how things should be. You shouldn't be writing specific code for specific uh, frameworks. You should be writing the same tests how your user would be testing them, uh, regardless of what framework you're using, whether it's React or Vue or even a server rendered framework. So these skills will be not only applicable to Vue and React, but anything you're going to be testing in the future as well. 
Anyway, that brings me to the end of this extremely long video. If you do want to try these things out, you can come over to the blog post. If you go back here, there's two simple uh, blog posts explaining both React and Vue. You can go ahead and read these. They have templates and lots of things to guide you. This is still an alpha product, so you're probably going to run into some rough edges. If you have any problems, just go ahead and make an issue on GitHub, or you can just ask me, and I'll personally do everything I can to help fix it up and get it all working for you. Anyway, I would really encourage you to go ahead and grab one of these templates and give it a try. It's really fun to work with. Like I can't, I can't really overstate how much more enjoyable it was to work on this component by being able to see and actually iterate on everything. It doesn't even feel like you're writing tests anymore. It feels like you're just saving yourself time from clicking on things manually. You can of course do this, but it's gonna be a lot slower. And more importantly, this is easily uh, reproducible on a CI environment. If you use something like Storybook, you don't have any confidence it's working correctly. You only have confidence it looks correct. And now we have confidence not only everything looks correct, but everything is behaving correctly as well. Anyway, I am starting to ramble on at this point. I'm just really excited for this new product. So I'll go ahead and probably make some more videos in the future about this. For now, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.